In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation using the method of variation of parameters. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. So solution. So the first step in the method of variation of parameters is to pretend that this is equal to zero and solve it. So to solve this when it's equal to zero, we start by writing down what's called the characteristic equation. So basically we match the power here to the derivative. So there's a second derivative, so this is m squared plus, and then there's a first derivative, so it's m, and then for the 2y we simply put a 2, and this is equal to 0. This should factor. Let's try it. So we need two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to 3. So 1 and 2 seem to do the job. So that'll give us m equals negative 2 and m equals negative 1. All right, good stuff. So now we have distinct real roots. So y sub c, which is the solution we get when this is equal to 0, is equal to c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the negative x. So this is called the complementary function or complementary solution. I like to call it the associated homogeneous solution. The final answer to this problem will be y equals yc plus yp. So essentially, in theory, we're halfway done, although there's still quite a bit left. <laughs> the next step is to compute the w's. So before we do that, we have to identify y1 and y2. So this piece here is your y1, always. And this piece here is your y2, always. I'm going to go ahead and write down the formulas for the w's. So the first w is just the Ronskian, so it's y1, y2 y1 prime, y2 prime. So this is equal to, so in the first row we have simply the functions, so e to the negative 2x, e to the negative x. In the second row we have the derivatives of the functions. So when you take the derivative of e to the negative 2x, you do use the chain rule, so you end up multiplying by negative 2. So you get negative 2 e to the negative 2x. Likewise here, you get negative e to the negative x, chain rule. We multiply this times this, so we get negative e to the negative 3x. That's because we add the exponents. Negative 2x plus negative x is negative 3x. Then minus, and then you multiply these. So minus and minus is really a plus, and then we have e to the negative 3x, and I lost my 2 there, so 2. When you add these, you'll get e to the negative 3x. Okay, I'm going to put that in a box because that is a major accomplishment. We have our w, which is e to the negative 3x. Okay, w1 is very similar. w1 is the same except you delete the first column and replace it with 0 and f of x. So this is your f of x. So basically you just put 0 and then you put whatever is there. So 1 over 7 plus e to the x. The second column of your w stays the same, so e to the negative x, negative e to the negative x. Just a word of warning, if you don't have a 1 here in front of your y double prime, you just have to make sure it is a 1, so you'd have to divide everything. So like if there was a 2 there instead of a 1, you'd have to divide everything by 2, and that would get absorbed into your f of x, and it would come into play down here in your w1. Okay, this times this is going to be 0, minus, and then this times this, so e to the negative x over 7 plus e to the x. So this will be negative e to the negative x, 7 plus e to the x. All right, so that's w1. Uh, I'm going to write it again. I'm going to write it up, up here. So I'll just come over here and write it again. So w1 is equal to negative e to the negative x over 7 plus e to the x. Okay, now we have to find uh, w2. So w2, we keep the first column of the Ronskian of our w, so it's e to the negative 2x, negative 2 e to the negative 2x. And because it's w2, we replace the second column with 0 and f of x. So 0, and then here we have 1 over 7 plus e to the x. So it's this times this. So we get e to the negative 2x, over 7 plus e to the x minus 0. So w2, 
I'll write it again and put it in a box, is e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. So that would be w2. All right, so now we can go ahead and do the next step. So I'm having a hard time seeing w1 from up there, so I'm going to write it again. w1 was negative e to the negative x over 7 plus e to the x, just because we're going to use them in the next step, so I want to be able to see them all. So now we compute the u's. This is what separates hard problems from easy problems. So u1 is w1 over w dx. Okay, so the next step is to compute these u's. So w1 is here. So I'll go ahead and write it. So we have negative e to the negative x over 7 plus e to the x. Then we're dividing by w, so we're multiplying by the reciprocal, which is really 1 over e to the negative 3x. So again, dividing by w is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's uh, pull the negative out, and let's bring the e to the negative 3x upstairs. That will make it positive. And now in the next step, see by bringing it up, you make it positive, the exponent. Now you can add the exponents. This will be negative e to the 2x over 7 plus e to the x dx. So this is an integral that you might not know how to do. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, it's pretty tough if you don't know how to do it. So the way I would do it, let me just show you how I'll do it, is I'm going to ignore the negative for now. Actually, let's, let's, let's incorporate the negative. Say we have negative e to the 2x over 7 plus e to the x. So what we'll do is we'll pull out an e to the x, and we'll write it like this. Okay. And then it's going to pull out that negative e to the x again, and then write it like this. So we have e to the x over 7 plus e to the x. So it would be really nice if we had a 7 up top so things would cancel. So what we do is we put it there. But then we have to take it away. I'm showing an extra step here that I never show. So then this is, feels a little bit weird. So then this is e to the x plus 7 over 7 plus e to the x minus 7 over 7 plus e to the x. And you see what happens here is, ah, uh, it goes away. So we get negative e to the negative x, 1 minus 7 over 7 plus e to the x. Let's distribute that negative now, so it'll be negative e to the negative x plus 7 e to the negative x, right? It becomes plus because there's two minuses, and then this is 7 plus e to the x. What a clever integral. So once you see it done once and you go through the process once, you're like, oh, wow, like how intense was that? And then you just never forget it because it's because it's so intense. Um, but if you've never seen it, it's like, whoa. So this is a really important technique. You write down what you want and you fix it later. This is something that's going to come up a lot in uh, the study of differential equations. So now we integrate each piece. So we have negative e to the negative x dx plus, and then this integral here uh, is going to be, oh, I feel like I, I, uh, I made a little mistake here. This is not a negative. This is a positive. So I fixed it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, fixed, fixed. So that's an e to the x. A little mistake there. I'm glad I caught it. Otherwise, I have to delete the video. <laughs> no fun. So that's a positive x. For some reason, I think I saw this negative, and I turned it into, over here, I turned it into a positive. So this is just this is just negative e to the x, okay? Negative e to the x, negative e, so this is, this is a positive x. So here this is 7 e to the x, uh, 7 plus e to the x. And the reason I caught my mistake, if you're curious, um, I was thinking, oh my god, how do we integrate this? <laughs> if that's, the, if that's if that has to be a positive x, otherwise we're in trouble. Okay, integrating e to the x, we're just going to get e to the x. So we just get negative e to the x. This is a really easy u sub. You could let u equal 7 plus e to the x. So du is e to the x dx. 
So it would just become, I guess I'll just do it, so 7 du over u. So this is going to be negative e to the x plus 7 ln absolute value of u. But you don't need the absolute value because 7 plus e to the x is always positive because they're both positive. So this was the hardest part of the whole problem was figuring out the u1. So this is negative e to the x plus 7 ln 7 plus e to the x. I'm going to put this in a box because it's a huge accomplishment. And again, just be careful. I did mess up here a little bit. So just the sign error. Okay, u2 is equal to w2 over w. That's the formula. So this is equal to, so w2 is way up there. So it's e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. Okay, e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. I'm going to write that down. So it's going to be e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. Now we're dividing by w, which was e to the negative 3x. So we multiply by the reciprocal, just like before. Except this time it works out nicer because you get e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x times e to the 3x over 1 dx. So u2 is equal to the integral of e to the x over 7 plus e to the x dx. You make a u sub, just like before, you end up with ln 7 plus e to the x. So u2, I'm going to write it again and put it in a box, is the natural log of 7 plus e to the x. Boom. All right. Now we can finish. So let's recall what we had before. So y sub c, I, I totally forgot. Let me go all the way back up. Yep, e to the negative 2x and e to the negative x. Okay, good. So it was c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the negative x. So why do we need that? Because we need y1 and y2 for the next step. So our y1 was e to the negative 2x. And our y2 was e to the negative x. And the next step tells us that yp is equal to u1 y1 plus u2 y2. I feel like I'm going really fast and um, this video is like already 12 minutes. <laughs> it's a long problem. So u1 is this. So it'll be negative e to the x plus 7 natural log 7 plus e to the x. Okay, that's going to be your u1. y1 is e to the negative 2x plus u2 is natural log of 7 plus e to the x. And then um, y2 is e to the negative x. Let's distribute this. Let's distribute this. This is going to give us negative e to the negative x, adding the exponents, plus 7 e to the negative 2x, right, it's this times this, ln 7 plus e to the x, and then we have this extra piece here, e to the negative x, ln 7 plus e to the x. Okay, we're not done. So the final answer is y equals yc plus yp. But after we do this, something is going to happen, and it's really important. So we have c1, e to the negative 2x, plus c2, e to the negative x. I'm going to write all of it again, minus e to the negative x, plus 7, e to the negative 2x, ln, 7 plus e to the x, plus e to the negative x, ln, 7 plus e to the x. Okay, here's the catch. So y is equal to, so you'll notice that these two terms here are the same, okay? So in theory, in theory, you could take these two terms and you could factor out an e to the negative x. And here's the thing. C sub 2 is arbitrary. We don't know what it is. It could be any number, right? When we subtract 1, it's still arbitrary. So what you do is you just rename it. You just say that this is equal to C3, e to the negative x, where C3 is equal to C2 minus 1. But you don't have to say this part, right? It's, it's clear to someone who knows math. 
they'll they'll see this and say, oh, okay, you can go from here to here. So this will be c1 e to the negative 2x plus c3 e to the negative x plus, and then there's not much you can do here. You can pull out the natural log, but it's not really, it's not going to help you in any way. So we have this, and then we have this. So it's a really important uh, last step. So you should always simplify stuff like this uh, if it's possible. It's not always possible, okay? Most of the time it's not. Uh, sometimes it is, though. So subtle point, right? Really, really subtle uh, situation. As another example, let's just say for fun, let's say you had e to the 2x plus, say you had c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 3x plus 4 e to the 2x minus 6 e to the 3x. So in this case, what you could do is you can combine these and call it c3 e to the 2x. And then combine these and call it c4 e to the 3x. Right, you could do that, right? Because again, you could factor out the e to the 2x here and you get c1 plus 4. Just call that c3. You could factor out an e to the 3x and you get c3, c2 minus 6. Just call that c4. So you're allowed to combine like terms and just rename them. It's a really, really important concept. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. Uh, it took a long time and you know, I did make a little mistake here. So Hopefully that made sense. Basically, just make sure it's you know e to the x, not negative x. Uh, that's it. Good luck.